So in this video, I'm going to be covering all the watercolor or gouache painting supplies you will ever need. So of course you want to start with a pencil. This is a mechanical pencil. It's 0.5 lead you can use uh, any kind of lead pencil that you want or you can use a conventional pencil in a wood casing I like these because you don't have to sharpen them and I have HB lead and F lead which is the best for drawing on watercolor paper because it leaves a little bit less dust um, HB is easier to draw with F is a little bit harder I have an eraser I also have an eraser that is not in a stick so this is for fine small spots this is for larger areas this one is just a pencil high polymer eraser. This is a fact, it's extra soft eraser, especially for watercolor paper because you can erase the watercolor paper without damaging it. I also have a kneaded eraser for teeny areas. You can shape the eraser and get a teeny tiny area out. You can also lighten an entire drawing without actually erasing the whole thing, which is very useful for watercolor and for gouache. Here's a black factus eraser. It's for working on darker paper or black paper and it erases cleaner and this works especially if you're painting gouache on a toned paper or a black paper. I also have my pencil grip which again I can put around my pencil and I've sliced down the side so I can put it on different brushes um, for a more comfortable pencil grip. Here's my pencil lead refills and I also have an erasing shield and this erasing shield is very useful to use to erase certain areas off of a drawing but also to lift up certain areas of watercolor or gouache as well off of a painting. You'll also want an X-Acto knife and this X-Acto knife is taller and leaner. This X-Acto knife fits more over a finger for a different kind of grip so you might want to have one of each and this is for scraping out highlights on dry or wet paint whether you're using gouache or watercolor. You can also have a teenier blade. This is a, a teeny little blade that I got off of Amazon and this is great for travel. Also for drawing into the paint or scraping off paint or laying down the paint in a slightly thicker layer or applying masking fluid you'd want a palette knife. Also I have a color shaper and this color shaper is just a siliconed tip hard edge thing and it looks like it's on a paintbrush but the end is actually just hard silicone tip. This is great for applying masking fluid and you can apply thicker gouache with this too. Do keep in mind if you apply gouache or watercolor too thick they will chip off the page so this is best used for masking fluid. You also have a bone folder not just for folding paper and helping you tear paper for watercolor and for gouache but also to smooth down paper that you might have torn up um, as a result of just poor handling or smoothing down paper that has been roughed up as a result of repeated lifting. So this actually helps and it works in place of a smoothing stone which you can also use. This is actually a full blender made by Karen Daash and you can use it to add a sort of polish to the top of certain drawings or paintings and you can also use it to act as a wax resist if you are painting with watercolor. And so this is useful to have. Of course you can, like I said, replace this with wax candles or a wax crayon, but I like this because it's clear and it doesn't show up very easily and you can also sharpen it to a very fine point. If you are working with watercolor pencils or wax crayons or drawing pencils that need sharpening, you'll of course also need a pencil sharpener. Make sure you get a fine pencil sharpener. This is actually a brush drawing mechanism that comes for oil painting and you can, it has a little metal cup that goes on the bottom of it and you can hang your brushes so they're soaking and turpentine or thinner. Because I don't paint with oil, I only paint with watercolor or gouache. I don't need to soak my brushes, but this is a great way to dry your brushes. So what I do is after I'm done painting with certain brushes, I rinse them out and then I just sort of press them into here. Even if you've worked with up to four or five brushes, you can use this. And once they're stuck like this, you just have to lean them against something. It can just be a bookshelf or um, the wall. I'm leaning it against the back of the desk here and it works just fine and if I leave those that way overnight it'll dry completely and it'll also be much better for the brush than if I just decided to um, leave them flat because if you dry your brushes hanging like this or so the water runs backward it ruins the glue and splays the brush out. If you let it dry flat it's better than hanging it upside down but it does let some of the water still puddle in here. If you actually dry them so they're facing down like this, it's best for them because the water runs right down and it doesn't get any chance to hurt the glue or the ferrule or the wood or anything. I have a few different water cups that I use 
and I have a, a water, a small water cup and dropper for dropping clean water into my pans and into my palette to revive dried out paint. Um, I also have these two glasses that I use and you'll notice that they're not gigantic. And the reason that I don't use giant water glasses is I just prefer to refill them instead of having a giant water thing taking up space on my desk. And also, I don't fill these up more than halfway. When you wet your brush, you don't want the water any kind of water in a water tub going past this part of the ferrule, the top part of it. And it does help lengthen the life of my brushes. And so if you want to um, have a large amount of water, then get a bigger dish that only has water that comes up to about that much so that you don't end up wetting past this spot. So make sure you have some clean water to add to paints and also some rinsing water for your brushes. Or anything that's labeled as a watercolor brush will work for watercolor and for gouache. So what I have here is my large flat wash brushes. So these brushes are good for laying down large washes, whether flat or graded of watercolor or of gouache. And these two are made out of goat hair and they're very soft so that I don't disturb previous layers. You wanna make sure you get brushes that are not too hard unless you're going for a particular effect because it'll help keep the watercolor or gouache from lifting up. So these are my two um, brushes that are hockey or hake brushes made out of goat hair. Then I have this nylon um, Cotman brush, which is from Windsor and Newton, and it's a one inch brush that helps lay down flat, and very thin washes with clean edges because it's got that nice edge. I also have a small brush from Sterling Edwards, and this is made out of bristle. And this is great for blending, so it's a blending and glazing brush. You can glaze with this, but I actually just choose to blend with this, and if you want to blend certain nature textures or certain colors that won't blend with the softer brushes, you can use his brush to do that, and it gives you lovely effects, especially for landscapes. So those are my four largest brushes. So this is the, the next largest brush I have, which is smaller than my one inch brushes. So all of these are one inch or one and a half inch, and then this brush is a round or mop, this is a mop brush and it's in squirrel hair or squirrel and goat hair and it's great for laying down smaller washes than with these large flat ones but still larger washes than I would like with the teeny ones. So these are my largest brushes. Then I've got what I've called my sort of effects or rubbing and blending sort of brushes and so I'll talk about these. Now I've already talked about having, making sure you have a palette knife and also a color shaper to lay down masking fluid or certain line effects because you don't want to use any kind of glue or masking fluid on brushes. It does tend to ruin them so why not just put them on with a metal or silicone tip. And I've got a tiny spotter here. This is for stippling. It's a size triple zero. And I've got these two brushes. One of them has been cut very short. This is for lifting out mistakes. So it's basically an eraser brush. And you can see that it's very, very tiny. And it used to be a flat head and I've cut it down. So it's very, very tiny and it's very rough on the paper. So you only want to use it for fixing mistakes that won't come out at all. And then I've got this brush, which is a Da Vinci Nova size 2, and it's also for erasing and fixing edges and spills, and this is gentler on the paper than this brush that has been cut down. So you've got these two erasers, one is a mild eraser of watercolor and gouache, and one is a sharper eraser of watercolor and gouache. The only other effects brushes that I have are a fan brush for doing foliage, and a deer foot brush for doing certain kinds of textures that would be that would damage my round brushes. Then I just have a variation of synthetic and sable and then sable and synthetic blend watercolor brushes in different sizes of round, angle, and flat. So here's a few round and here are two angles and these are all synthetic. And um, if you do want to layer more carefully then you want to get out your sable brushes. So here are my sable rounds and I've got um, a, a six Da Vinci, a three Da Vinci, I've got a four in silver, black velvet, and I think this is not sable, I think it's squirrel or something, but it's um, not synthetic. I've got a double zero Kalinske round, so another sable brush. I've got a watercolor brushes of two different sorts primarily, the synthetic and the sable. And the sable are gentler on the paper and give better layers, and the synthetic are still soft because they're for watercolor, they're not like they're boar bristle or for oil painting, but 
They are a little bit tougher on the paper than sables when you are blending out an edge or when you are doing something rougher to the paper, use your synthetic brushes. And when you're doing something soft or layering, then use your sable brushes and then all of them will last a long time. Um, I have a few travel brushes. I've got a one and a four. These are round Da Vinci, they're both synthetic. And I've got a few more round brushes here, also sable. So they're not any different from what I've already been showing you. Here's two more spotters that are newer than the other spotter, which is a little bit uh, worse for wear. So I can replace it. These is a 20 over zero and a 20 over zero size so you can use this for really really tiny um, spotting stippling and lining areas so apart from the round and the flat and the angle head i also have a few dagger brushes and these dagger brushes actually come at a, like a sharp angle and down to a point and so you can use them in place of using a round brush or an angle brush because it does the work of both uh, silver black velvet so it's not synthetic it's some kind of real hair and this one is a synthetic one and it's for smaller pieces it's a quarter inch dagger brush don't forget that you'll need a rag or washcloth to soak up water from your brushes and also to meter the water in your brush when you're painting. All right, before I move on to the paints and the paper, um, I wanna show you a few different rulers that I have. A see-through ruler, so I've also got an architect's ruler, a compass, this is an edge tear, and I have one in plastic and one in metal. Paper deckler is what they call them, and um, you can deckle your edges. Also, if you're doing serious painting and illustration, it's good to have um, a large triangle like this because you can make a long straight line in this direction, you can make a long straight line and angular in this direction, and there's one on the bottom that helps you line it up to the bottom of your drawing board or your paper. I've actually glued with super glue a ruler onto the bottom of this triangle completely parallel and it's, it gives me a little bit of a raised edge here. And so what it does is it, it keeps this, it turns this into a little T-square basically. Okay, so to show you an example, say I'm working on this painting and it's mounted on a block, I can take this triangle and it'll sit and get stuck over the edge of this block. See how it's stuck here like this? And so it'll allow me to get completely straight lines anytime I want to do that. I also have my proportional divider. So the best kind of paper that you can buy for watercolor for gouache is um, Arches watercolor paper, and I've got assorted sized blocks, and here's just a small block that I have, and a block, again, is glued down on like three and a quarter sides so that your paper doesn't work while you're painting, and it works great for watercolor or for gouache. It's thick enough for me that I think that I don't need to purchase illustration board, which is uh, bulkier and also just more inconvenient and expensive, but um, I think um, Arches is perfect for watercolor or for gouache painting, and I don't really bend my paintings very much. If you you bend your painting a lot if it's gouache it'll crack a little bit which is if you are going to do that then maybe you should get illustration board otherwise there's no reason for you to get illustration board you can just get arches watercolor paper um, of course you can get fabriano i've got some fabriano watercolor cards here um, it is not as good as arches but it's a really decent paper and some people like it better than arches so it's another good option you can also have a moleskin journal you can have loose arches watercolor paper and you can have other watercolor journals like the handbook journal um, company uh, Strathmore Mixed Media also works for watercolor and for um, gouache, so it is thinner. And definitely this is a good travel option if you're painting at home, you're doing something more professional, don't do anything but arches or real illustration board because it's going to warp. You can also buy Bristol, which is what I have here. It's a, a little bit thicker paper and it's a, with a vellum finish. And I don't think it takes washes of watercolor or gouache as well as arches watercolor paper. So I would not recommend getting um, Bristol board personally unless you're doing pen and ink work. I would not get rough watercolor paper. I would get cold press or hot press if you're doing gouache or watercolor because it gives you better detail and better control. Um, if you want to do something that's really loose, then by all means get rough watercolor paper. So another option for gouache painting um, is Canson pastel paper. You can get it in black or in other colors. And you can also get Strathmore Artigain drying paper in black. And um, this is great for if you want to draw from dark to light. And you can only use this paper if you're using very little water because this is drying paper and it's not, um, it's drying paper. So it's meant for pastels or it's meant for dry media like color pencils. So if you use a lot of water, it will buckle on you. The final paper I wanna talk about for watercolor painting or gouache painting is uh, BFK Reeves and it's a printing paper um, or silk screening paper and it's made um, by Arches as well but you can buy it giant and loose like this and, and uh, 
cream color or, or white or in um, other colors and it is really great for ink in particular but also for watercolor and gouache as long as you stay watery. So this is the thinnest of the paper so if you are going to do something really thick especially with gouache then don't use this paper but it's the final option for beautiful watercolor and loose gouache painting. You'll also need some palettes for your paint and I use porcelain palettes because they don't stain and um, they work great for watercolor, gouache, or pen and ink um, painting. So a really teeny one. If they're high quality paints that come in pans, then you can revive them. If you let your ink dry, then you cannot use your ink again. But if you let your watercolor or gouache dry, you can use it again. And here's another circular palette that I have. Um, so this is also porcelain. And I also have a plexiglass palette, which I've shown before. So all of these are equally good to use for watercolor, gouache, or pen and ink. You'll want sponges for effects and also a chamois and you can push and pull paint and effects out of your paper in watercolor and gouache using um, sponges so the natural sponges will give you cool textures that are look very random and organic and you can pull off little pieces to make that work and for the synthetic ones you can cut them into wedges and use them to paint larger sections of the painting and use them even in place of a brush. My favorite paints for watercolor and for gouache painting are Schmincke. I also have some Winsor & Newton paints and a few small pans and stuff but the majority of the paints that I own are Schmincke paints because they are the best quality and I can use them over and over again and they last for years. They use the same formula in their pan as they do in their tube and they're the only company to do so so for me they're the only paint that I want to work with. So remember I talked to you about some colors are opaque and some colors are transparent so quality gouache paint is not going to have a lot of white in it. It's actually just going to sell you opaque pigment. So I've got a chart of all of my paints here that are my Schmincke paints and I've shown this before and the little squares here that I have colored in show me which ones are transparent and which ones are opaque. When I'm doing gouache painting I will only choose an opaque yellow. So for example for example, the vanadium yellow has a really dark black square here. It's all the way colored in which means that this is an opaque yellow I'm going to use this for gouache painting. And if I'm doing watercolor painting then I'm going to use one of my transparent yellows like pure yellow or new gamboge. So vanadium yellow will make for a more intense gouache painting, but I can use any of these colors even if they are transparent if I just add 15% white. So if you don't have any watercolor paints and you only want to paint in gouache, then the best companies are Schmincke, Winsor & Newton, or Daniel Smith, and those will give you the best watercolor paints and the best gouache paints. So you can buy both kinds of paints or you can buy just watercolor and make your watercolors into gouache by adding white or just using your opaque colors. These are um, Albert Durer Faber-Castell watercolor pencils and these are good for adding finishing touches on a watercolor or a gouache painting. So you can use them for that. If you're going to use them just by themselves for a large painting, they're going to be pretty inconvenient because they're really tiny. So they're only good for touches or for teeny tiny paintings on the go. I also have a bottle of masking fluid and a bottle of gum arabic. For masking parts of a paper or saving a white or a part of the paper in a particular color and gum arabic is for increasing luminosity and transparency of watercolor and also if you use it really thick you can even do some kind of a resist with it. I also have a pan of ox gall. Um, you can also buy this in a bottle like this um, but I just have a pan because it's more convenient to travel with. Now this is kind of disgusting because it's basically um, from the gallbladder of an uh, ox, so it's basically bile, it's ox bile. But what it does is, is that it's a dispersant. So especially for gouache, if you use six drops of this or a, a swipe of, off the top of this into your mixing water and you use that for your entire painting, it helps the gouache spread better without streaking. So if you don't want to buy a gouache set or if you're looking for a cheaper alternative for traveling or at home, then you can also buy um, the Creative Color Aqua Sticks or the Caran d'Ache Aqua Sticks and then just use them as you would gouache. Um, they come with a white so you can add more white to them. You can buy a separate tube of white if you want more white because you will use a lot of it. These work as watercolor of course because you can thin them down but because they're actually thicker and milkier and waxier they actually look like gouache paint and you can use them very easily as gouache. So if you want to do that you can do that too. I also have a full set of Dr. Phil Martin's India inks. You have the option of buying gouache paint separately but you can also mix at a 15% white ratio into any color and get a kind of gouache paint. If you're using it with ink then you'll get a less perfect effect but again if you have some ink on hand and just have some white tubes and you can use this too and it also create a gouache painting. 